Hi, I'm Paul Kyogen from GK Tuition, and in this video I want to talk to you about sequences and series. Now the first question that I've chosen to go through here is 2018 Paper 1, Question 2, Part A. In this question we're told that the first three terms of, an, of a geometric sequence are x squared, 5x minus 8, and x plus 8. So I know my t1, t2, and t3. The question says, use the, use the common ratio to prove that x cubed minus 17x squared plus 80x minus 64 is equal to 0. What they mean by use the common ratio is they mean some of your learning work from sequences and series. If a sequence is geometric, you know that the third term divided by the second term is equal to the second term divided by the first term. In other words, there's a common ratio. t3 over t2 equals t2 over t1. So in order to come up with an equation here, we literally just need to sub into this. t3 in this case is x plus 8, t2 is 5x minus 8. Then the other fraction is t2 is 5x minus 8, t1 is x squared. If I have two fractions and an equals in between them, you can cross multiply, or you could think of it as multiplying both sides by x squared and multiplying both sides by 5x minus 8. Either way, you end up with x squared times x plus 8 is equal to 5x minus 8 by 5x minus 8. Now if you multiply this one out and simplify it down, you just bring everything to one side and you get what you were trying to prove in the first place, which is that this, these figures are equal to 0. That x cubed minus 17x squared plus 80x minus 64 equals 0. In part B of this question, we're asked to prove that f of 1 is equal to 0. I know f of x is equal to this, so to get f of 1, everywhere there's an x, I just sub in a 1. So if you just sub in 1 for all of these and work your way through it, you end up with 0 is equal to 0. So I would always get you to conclude, put a tick beside it, say that it's true. Because f of 1 is equal to 0, that means that x equals 1 is a root. If x equals 1 is a root, then you can bring the 1 back across. That means that x minus 1 is the corresponding factor. Now that you know that x minus 1 is a factor, you can answer this, the next part of this question. The other thing they asked you to do in part B was they asked you now to find another value for which f of x is equal to 0. In other, in other words, they're asking you to find another root. The 1 was one of the roots, now they're asking you to find another root. If you know that x minus 1 is a factor, you can find the other root by just long division. So the next part of this question, we're going to divide x minus 1 into this cubic, and we're going to get the other roots of the equation. Okay, so if I know x minus 1 is a factor of this cubic, I use long division to find the other factors. There's four steps to your long division. The first thing you always do is divide. The first thing here into the first thing here. x divided into x cubed goes x squared times. The second step is multiply, so I multiply x squared by each of these terms. x squared by x is x cubed. x squared by minus 1 is minus x squared. My third step is to subtract. And in order to subtract, you have to change your signs. So this becomes a minus, this becomes a plus. My x cubed will cancel out. And then I have minus 17 plus 1 gives me minus 16x squared. And the fourth thing we do is we take down the next term, which in this case is plus 80x. And then we just start our process all over again. The first step here is divide. So you take the first thing here and you divide it into the first thing here x into minus 16x squared goes minus 16x times. Minus 16x multiplied by x is minus 16x squared. Minus 16x by minus 1 is plus 16x. Now I need to change my signs and subtract, so I get a plus and I get a minus. Minus 16 plus 16 is 0. Plus 80 minus 16 is plus 64x. And the last thing I'm going to do then is take down my next term, which in this case is a minus 64, and just start my process all over again. I'm going to divide x into plus 64, x goes plus 64 times. I'm going to multiply 64 by x gives me plus 64 x. 64 by minus 1 gives me minus 64. Change my signs to a minus and to a plus. My x's and my numbers cancel, and I'm left with a remainder of 0. If you didn't get a remainder of 0 there, you would have known you've gone wrong. Because I know x minus 1 is a factor of that, so my remainder has to be 0. So I've worked out that the other factor is x squared minus 16x plus 64. So this is one of the other factors. Uh, so I know that I want to now solve this and find the corresponding roots. So if I solve this quadratic equation, the roots of this quadratic are x minus 8 and x minus 8. Which means that if I went to solve this, 
This quadratic has two equal roots, each of which, each of which are 8. So I get x minus 8 equals 0, which means that x is equal to plus 8. So the other two roots of this cubic are x equals 8 and x equals 8. So you've ultimately worked out all three roots here. The first one we proved that x minus 1, x equals 1 is a root. Then we found the other two are x equals 8 and x equals 8. Okay, for the final part of this question, we're told that in the case of one of the answers from part B, the terms in part A will generate a, a, sum to in, a finite sum to infinity. Finite sum to infinity basically means that it's not infinite, or in other words, that it's not infinite. Basically, it means that if this sequence continued on forever and you added up all of the terms, they wouldn't add up to infinity. Okay? So the first thing I've done here is I've done it like a table. So I have t1, 2, and 3. I know is x squared, 5x minus 8, and x plus 8. If x is equal to 1 and I sub in, my, ter my, my geometric series is 1 minus 3, 9. Okay? And in that case, then, the a, the first term, is 1, or the common ratio is any term divided by the previous term. Minus 3 divided by 1 is just minus 3. On the other hand, if I use my other value for, for x, where x is equal to 8, I will get 64, 32, 16. In this case, the first term is 64, a, and my or is any term divided by the previous term, which is a half. Now, you can think about this two different ways. First of all, this one here, clearly what's happening, the common ratio is minus 3, which means you're multiplying by minus 3 again and again and again. If you continue to multiply this, these numbers by minus 3 an infinite amount of times, eventually that number is going to reach infinity eventually those numbers are just going to be infinity. You're going to get, it's, it's beyond, it's unfathomable how big the number will be, so we just refer to it as infinity. On the other hand, if you look at this one, 64, 32, I'm multiplying by half every time. So the next one will be 8, the next one will be 4, 2, 1, a half, a quarter. It's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. You're going to, if you kept doing that forever, you'd keep on multiplying by a half, and eventually that number would be so small that it's negligible. The number you're adding on would eventually be so small that it might as well be a zero. So it's a negligible value. So in this case, the sequence that has a finite sum to infinity is the second one. Because, basically because the numbers are decreasing. But a mathematical way of, of thinking about it is that or is between one and minus one. If your common ratio is between one and minus one, that means the numbers are getting smaller. That means a, sum, a finite sum to infinity exists. In the log tables, it actually says that. If you look at your log tables, beside the formula for the sum to infinity, it tells you that you can only use this formula if 1 is greater than the absolute value of or. And that's just another way of saying that or has to be between 1 and minus 1. So, that's, so the, first, the first answer to that is there's a finite sum to infinity when x is equal to 8. Now let's just, we can sub into this formula and it's relatively straightforward to get our sum to infinity. So once I've identified which sequence I'm dealing with, it's relatively straightforward. 64, 32, 16, a is 64, or is a half. And the formula is s infinity is a over 1 minus or, so if you plug it in, you just get 128. So that means, mathematically, that means that if, if I just added on, if I just kept doing this sequence and I just added on all the, to all the terms to infinity, Basically, those numbers would reach 127.99999. It would get ridiculously close to 128, but it would never quite get there. Because after a while, the number I'm adding on is so small that it might as well be negligible. So I hope this video makes sense now. And if there's anything you want me to clarify there, just let me know in class and I'll try and explain it differently.